Hi guys, today I want to speak about uh, DIY um, lens making with uh, epoxy resins. So I just want to go through the process that I went through to make my uh, optical quality lenses such as, uh, such as these here. You see there's absolutely no scratch or, uh, or a faded surface. It's very transparent, clear. And the, the problem that I had with this uh, specific lenses, they are not just optical lens, uh, lenses, they are also functional, meaning it's not like a, just a concave surface with a flat edges. This is actually, you know, from an instrument. The lens is beautiful, but it also has this very difficult, uh, let's call it tab, tabs and, a, and a, a very thin edge on the side which is very difficult to replicate so uh, the process is actually called replication molding you need to have an original one so when you make your uh, your mold that it can actually go against that surface that you're after so uh, here is a, a mold that I that I made in silicone basically I just made a, a box out of uh, styrofoam. No, I just used styrofoam. I made a square box just with tape around it. Put one on the bottom, and the original part I glued that on the on the bottom. So close the close the wall off. You pour the resin, uh, the the silicone. Let that cure for a day. Uh, hopefully, you don't have bubbles. And then once you have that part, which would be, which, which would be this one, you see I have a four, four holes there, which is my registration marks, which I placed on the bottom here. So that one day that you did this, you come out with this one. Then with the lens inside, you, you just do the opposite. Now with the silicone on the bottom, again, you make your wall out of any substrate that you have. You make your wall around it, you make your, you mix your resin, pour it inside, and the next day you have the bottom with the lens inside, and then you have your top part, which is this one. Now, this is all very easy to, to say, but actually doing is another thing, especially if you want to have, if you want to have this quality with these edges. Now, the, the, the trouble that you will get into is to, uh, is, uh, first of all, the bubbles. Bubbles in your, uh, in your silicone and bubbles in your resin. Now, um, at first I tried it without any uh, vacuuming and pressure, uh, pressure pots. And slowly I realized that you cannot do this without the vacuum pot and the pressure pot, vacuum chamber. So uh, I bought those and I bought a compressor and slowly but surely I'm getting somewhere. But I, to, get, to get this one, one lens going, I threw, threw away a lot of uh, silicone because it, there was always something or a bubble or a scratch. You need to be very uh, clean with your space, which you think you are, but you you just never know that it could be a little piece of dust um, somewhere in your uh, workspace. Um, then the next thing is your uh, your uh, venting, your your gates in your mold. It's 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 basically just the same like designing an injection mold. Um, for example. I have a few other ones, but uh, I threw away a lot. But for example, you can see you can see the holes here on the edge. That would be my fill port here and my air vents over here. So you would actually, if I were to put it like, let's say like this here, they say you always want to fill low and vent high. So basically, 
like you see here, these are actually molds that I that I just poured. This is a complete mold. The bottom, the top. Here I have my um, fill port, which is just a piece of paper that I made in a conical shape. And here I just have a regular drinking straws as my air vents. So again, I I mix my resin. I put it in the vacuum uh, degassing chamber to get the most bubbles out and then I pour from a high a high distance to avoid bubbles if there were bubbles in my in my resin by going very high you get a very thin stream actually the, if there is a bubble uh, still present that bubble disappears in that very thin stream going inside and as I'm holding it slanted in an angle like this while I'm pouring it, it slowly flows, the, the resin slowly fo uh, flows from the bottom pushing the air out to the top through the air vents so that's how it works um, now again easy to say you need to know where you're going to put the, the vents how thick they should be depending on the, the thickness of your resin and you have to keep in mind that you have a, a pot life when you mix the A and the B of your resins my pot life is only 8 minutes so in 8 minutes you need to degas uh, first you, you mix it by hand 1 minute, 2 minutes you put it in your vacuum pot you lose another 2 minutes so I have only 4 minutes left to pour this in here which, which, which goes um, which takes almost again two minutes to get from here to there but you you would help as you pour it uh, when you when you can see the the resin is over here you just flat it down and it, it goes much quicker and the advantage of having this fill port so tall is that it creates a, a pressure you know like in water pressure the volume of the resin in here pushes that uh, more down and then you will actually see your resin rise up in your uh, air vents again consideration of thickness of your uh, fill ports and air ports in the beginning um, in the beginning I did it without the, the vent port and the fill ports because I read about squish, squish molding which is basically exactly the same process where you instead of having the the mold together like this what you do you take one half you mix your resin you pour it inside on the bottom part and then you squeeze squeeze your resin in the cavity basically now Again, like I said, I, I, I wasted a lot of silicone um, by doing this and I had actually great results, great results, but uh, one out of two ha has, a, has, a, has a problem of the, of the final product. That's where I, by hand, uh, I cut little holes for air because I didn't want to waste my silicone. Silicone costs money, takes time, you have to order it, wait. And each time you pour, you have to wait a day. So instead of throwing away my my uh, original silicone molds, I just adapted them, just as an experiment to see where I need to be, basically. And that's how I learned the process. So squeeze mold, great, but you can always have air trapped because as you, as you are pushing, yes, it's going out, but you you never know if there's an air bubble trapped okay then I made the little holes by cutting them with a with a knife you know I have a, a a thin knife like a surgical knife I cut the holes of course it's very unsightly you know we are talking about doing optical lenses so squish mold didn't work out for me the, I got the best results from doing it really like a let's call it like an injection mold with a fill port and vent ports this is how i get to this kind of quality 
I mean, I mean, it's it's a uh, super quality. With this very thin, I don't know if you can see it with these very thin little tabs here, and I, we are speaking about half a millimeter, half a millimeter tabs. So result is amazing, but to tell you, the other thing that you have, once they come out of the mold, they don't come out uh, ready, let's call it, they come out of the mold like this. So you gotta deal with flashing. It's a perfect lens, but you now need to trim those vent ports, you see, you see them here? You need to trim the vent ports. So what I do, I let it uh, cure for a few more days so it's hard and I'm hoping you know like you could crack crack it off but I'm using um, I'm using pliers hold on a second I'm using these uh, precision pliers that I have actually it came with my 3d printer and I would just very carefully on the edge uh, trim uh, the flashing and uh, the ports off and then you know you get the final product like this where everything is trimmed uh, um, what I want to say this is the um, the bad part of, uh, of this you mean you have such a clean pore and now you have the the other job of getting the flashing and the ports off, which can be you can do it with a Dremel. But you have such a nice finish, and you have to be very careful not to damage that nice finish by by removing your uh, flashing and uh, and ports. So that was it, guys. I think that I was thorough. Um, if you want to make your lenses, it can be done. You just need to be very uh, persistent that you really want to do this because it, it, it can take um, a long time and a lot of uh, frustrations by getting uh, air bubbles. But you see here, uh, absolutely no, no air bubbles. It's super optical quality. And if I can do with these little edges on the side, you can really do any lens you can make any lens yourself so that was it guys hope you enjoy my video thank you very much